In this video, I'd like to talk about projectiles launched at an angle. So the idea is you actually have a volleyball that is on fire and you don't want to hold it anymore. So you hit that volleyball and a beautiful thing happens. If you hit a volleyball inside of a graph, <laughs> let's say that the volleyball starts at the origin of that graph and you hit it up at some angle. Initially, it's going like this or something, and we can call this the initial velocity vector, then that volleyball's path does not follow this straight line because gravity is causing to accelerate the whole time. It ultimately ends up doing something like this. And this graph ought to be, if I can draw it carefully enough, ought to be symmetric because it's a parabola. So if we take it right here down the middle, you'll see that the left side is equivalent to the right side if there's no air resistance. So a lot of people, when asked questions like, how far does it go? How high does it go? Want to do some interesting geometric arguments. They want to take this out to here, and they want to say something about halfway or a quarter of the way or something, you make some triangles because they're giving this angle right here. Sometimes you know the range. And all this nonsense makes me so mad and I throw it away. So, instead, I'd like you to consider a flaming volleyball and you start from the origin right here and you throw it or hit it or spike it or something. It has an initial velocity and it does experience parabolic motion. But before we go on, we can label some things about this. This point right here, I want to call y max and this ooh ooh or ooh interesting this is actually the height of zero this uh this if this time is t equals zero over here then this is called uh delta t total and up here how much time do you think it takes to get to halfway compared to the full time. I'm gonna say this happens at delta t top, and then I wanna write down over to the side that delta t total is two times as long as delta t top. I hope that's reasonable for you. And our next plan is to um, well, we, we could call this distance right here, we could call this distance delta x total. And would it be fair, I hope it wouldn't be too confusing to call this distance right here delta x at the top. When it is at the top of its path, it has gone this far in the x direction. And uh, can we make another little equation here that says delta x top is equal to one half delta x total. Sorry, I put that in the other form. The questions that you could be asked here are how far how far, and in parentheses, we're gonna say, then they're asking for it, delta x total. And they could also ask you how high it goes. And then they'd be asking for delta y max, or we could call it delta y at the top because that's the same thing. And uh, they could also ask us for how long it's in flight. And that would be, uh, I guess we'd have to call that delta t total. And they could also ask us things like, how much time does it take to reach the peak? And how far does it go? Oh, let's see. How far does it go horizontally when it's at its peak? So we could ask for the coordinates of this location right here. But basically what you need to remember is that as soon as the volleyball that's on fire leaves your hand, 
The volleyball will be moving at a steady speed in one direction, and its speed will be changing in the other direction. Which direction is which? There's steady motion in one direction and accelerated motion in the other direction. We're going to just label up here. We'll just say that the acceleration of gravity is pointing that direction. So that means that there's no acceleration. In fact, if we're assuming a parabolic path, then there's no acceleration in the x direction. That means there's no air resistance. It's a harder problem if you bring in air resistance because air resistance opposes the direction of the motion. So it's going to be changing its direction. It's going to be fighting the progress of the flaming volleyball the entire time. So you'd have to use differential equations for that. But this is not a hard problem at all if there's no air resistance. So let us go to taking this initial velocity vector and we're assuming we're given an angle say the initial velocity vector is right here, v naught, and we know v naught, and we know the launch angle is some angle theta, and we can then find out how much v naught is in x and how much v naught is in y. I'm going to take a dotted line down here, so we have a right angle, and I'm going to get out my <laughs> just kidding. I'm going to say that this is the adjacent side. So, so, ka, ka has adjacent in it. So that means that this must be v naught, that's the hypotenuse, times the cosine of theta because it's the adjacent side. v naught times cosine theta. And this is v naught times sine of theta. But I can define what these suckers are. This is v naught sine theta, so it's v naught in the y direction, and this is v naught in the x direction. Now we can go to the kinematic equations, because once we've isolated the x motion from the y motion, the x motion is constant the entire time. This flaming volleyball will be moving steadily to the right during our adventure. But it will be moving in the y direction, it will be moving up rapidly, and then here it will be stopped in the y direction, and then it will start moving down faster and faster and faster. In fact, one interesting side effect of this symmetric parabola is that the final velocity over here, we could draw the final velocity, the final velocity has the exact same x component as the initial velocity, but the y component of the final velocity, the y component of the final velocity, is, this, is the opposite of the initial y velocity. So this will be negative v naught times sine of theta, and this is simply v naught times cosine of theta. All right. We're going to do a lot of problems like that so that you become very comfortable with it. I wanted to add one more comment to the parabolic motion discussion that we'd had, and that is that time is evolving for the x direction and the y direction. So if you've got information in x, and you're trying to get information in y, you need to use the time. They may tell you the range, for instance, and the launch angle, and you can use those to figure out the initial velocity's x component, and then reconstruct the initial velocity's y component, and use that to find the height. So the key fact that I want to tell you is that time connects x and y. And that's worthy of four exclamation points and probably even a flower pot.